This was long division, what we just did right here. Now, mathematicians are inherently lazy. They like to make things as short as possible. When they write things, you know how you, you never write out a full sentence, X belongs to all the real numbers, right? You go X, E, R, and you make a new R so that it can be a lot shorter than it was before. So mathematicians looked at this long division for polynomials and they went, there's got to be a faster way. So they started off by saying, instead of writing x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 7, if I have those sort of as place values, I can say I have 1x cubed minus 2x squared 5x's and minus 7 once. And that saves some time by not having to write the variables with it. As long as you're holding a place that the last one is your constant, then this is 1x, this is x squared, and that's x cubed, then you've got enough. So I'm doing the same one in a shorter way. Okay? And then in, we're going to set it up like this. And because we're dividing by x minus 2, I'm not going to write the x just because I haven't written the x over there. And instead of minus 2, I'm going to switch the sign and go plus 2. Seems more complicated. Are you ready to see the answer? OK. And this is how you do it. You bring down the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, and you get x squared plus 5 remainder 3. I love this. It's beautiful. Whoa. It's like, OK, was that fast? Yeah, for all those people that decided I wasn't going to listen for two seconds, you missed it all, right? OK, we'll go through this slower. So what happens? Bring it down, multiply, add. You bring it down, multiply, add. That's sort of the same thing as we did over here, except here we subtracted. So by changing the sign on the two, it, allows it, it allowed us to add instead of subtract. And that's important because people make less mental math errors when they add than when they subtract. One of the things that you may have noticed all the way through when doing this is when you were dividing by x minus 2 or x plus 1 or x minus 3, when this was x minus or x plus something, whatever your first number here, the coefficient of this green x squared matched the coefficient of what we would under dot first. We'll get to that. We'll, we'll, I'm going to take it back slowly. I did it fast on purpose so that it would be like, whoa. OK, it's going to be OK. <laughs> so we noticed that whatever the coefficient is of the first one was always the coefficient of our first one here. That's why this number gets brought down. So whatever number is there gets brought down because that happened to always be the case. Then what happened with this green x squared? You multiplied that x squared by the x and by the negative 2. Now multiplying by the x was redundant because it always disappeared. So that doesn't show up here. But multiplying that 1 by the negative 2 does show up. And that's when this number gets multiplied by that number and goes there. And because we've switched the sign, it allows us to add these ones instead of subtract them. Negative 2 plus 2 and get 0. And just like we repeat and we repeat and we repeat over here, we do the same thing over here. Now we have a 0, so we multiply these two, put it there, and add 5 plus 0 to get 5. And then the last step, 2 times the 5, that gives us the 10. Add these ones and get our remainder. The other one, at least you can see what's happening. This one is, goes fast and there's no numbers and you're going to be able to use both. Yes. So this only works for when you said x yes. So this is going to be a shortcut that we're only going to use when it's x plus or x minus. So if you had 3x plus 2 and you're dividing, you'd have to use long division. If you have x squared plus 5, you'd have to use long division. Yes? 
We're going to use this method if we want to see if something factors because we're going to be looking for a remainder of zero. It is a little bit faster. It takes up less room. So there are some definite benefits to this method. If you want to highlight this in your textbook, let's see what page is it on. It starts on page five. Uh, that's not the one. Here we go. There, synthetic division. And if we click through things and stuff here, what do we do first? So the first thing, this number on the outside, which they say write down the value of A, that's always opposite the sign that you're dividing by, because that's going to allow you to add instead of subtract. The next thing that you do is you write down the coefficient of the polynomial. So that becomes those three numbers. You don't have to write the x squared, the 7, or the minus 4, but you have to make sure that your polynomial is in the right order. And you have to make sure that if something's missing, that you include a 0. Because if you don't, it'll, your answer that you'll get will not make any sense. Always from the highest degree to the lowest degree. The first thing you do is bring down that leading coefficient of a 5. And then it's always multiply and write it there, then add. So I multiply the 2 times the 5 to get the 10. 7 plus 10 is 17. I multiply the 2 times the 17 to get the 34. and add again. And then you can, with that answer that you get at the bottom, this is always going to be your remainder right here. And working backwards, you can add your variables. So it'll be 5x plus 17, remainder 30. Yes? If it were x plus 2, then you put the opposite sign, and we would be a minus 2 out here. So let's look, at our, let's look at our first example out of the textbook here. It has x plus 2 perfectly in question. And so because it's x plus 2, we'd put a minus 2 outside here. Do a quick check. Are they in the right order? They are. Is anything missing? No. So 3, 2, 3, negative 4, 5. It's negative 3 to start with, negative 4 there. So we keep the signs with it. Positive numbers stay positive. If the coefficient is negative or if there's a subtract sign, then we would make that coefficient negative. The negative 3 from this negative 3? Whatever you're dividing by, we always change the sign. So if you're dividing by x plus 2, you'd write a negative 2 there. That allows us to add instead of subtract. So we bring down our first number, negative 3. Then we multiply negative 2 times negative 3, 6, and add. Then we do negative 2 times 8, negative 16, and add. Negative 2 times negative 13, positive 26, and add negative 2 times negative 20, times 22. This one says write the division statement. Remember your division statement is that Dairy Queen thing, polynomial equals dq plus r. And so we can write it negative 3x to the 4 plus 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 is equal to x plus 2 negative 
And when trying to figure out what your power is that you're going to start by, when you divide by x plus 2, the power is going to be 1 less to start with. You can work your way backwards if you wanted to, remainder, then constant, then x, then x squared, then x cubed. Or you can think, when I multiply this first x by this, this would have to be an x cubed to get negative 3x to the 4. And then we'd have plus 8x squared minus 13x plus 22. And that remainder of minus 39 would show up as subtract 39 at the end. So again, this is our polynomial divisor quotient plus our remainder. Yeah, easier but more complicated at the same time. They should have a word for that. Easicated. There. Complicated and easy put together. All right, so to easicate your life some more, try 3b and 7. Now that's not the right numbers, sorry. You, I already assigned those. Try. 8, 9, 11, and 12. It's like, I thought I gave you those numbers yesterday. And I did. Yesterday? The other day. <laughs>